All right, so today what we're going to talk about is uh, bivy style, uh, one or two person style or three person style uh, backpack hunting. Uh, and we're going to go over the, the shelters that we use for that. Um, so the first thing I want to get out of the way is just kind of a quick explanation. These two right here, I wouldn't do more than three days. I would stay to just about three days in these just for comfort level. Um, and these two, I would go multiple days, uh, 10, 15, however many days you're going to be out. Um, as far as uh, durability, um, these are durable. They, they will last a while. Uh, they are extremely lightweight at about a half a pound. Um, they're really designed for an emergency type uh, of a shelter. Uh, this is a slumberjack, which uh, it doesn't breathe real well. Uh, that's why I don't use it a ton but it is nice for three or four days. You can see the weather, you know, the moisture level is not gonna to be too terribly high. So this works really good for three days going in ultra light. Um, you can add a tarp to this. You can do a six by eight or an eight by 10 tarp uh, that you can set up and I'll show that configuration here. Uh, another option uh, for maybe four or five days if you wanted to is to uh, use a, a hammock. Uh, we do uh, use hammocks. Um, the, the problem with the hammock is each of us carry our hammock. Our hammock's about two pounds each versus we can take this tent, which is a, a four person tent and the twins and I can split it up between the three of us. We're carrying about a pound and a half, uh, just a little over a pound and a half each um, to take this. And this is far more comfortable um, as far as having vestibules on both ends and keeping your gear covered. Uh, the problem with the hammock is you don't really have any place to put your gear. It's got to sit out in the open unless you've got a, a bigger style tarp, a seal nylon tarp. Uh, so anyway, um, about three pounds here and five pounds here on these tents. Um, you can go longer than uh, two or three days. I just don't choose not to. I rather um, have more room, more space, and, and a place to keep my gear. Um, and so that's why I would choose if I was gonna go more than three days to go to, to a tent uh, versus a hammock or a bivy. Um, the great thing about the bivvies is they're ultra lightweight. Again, like I said, you're about a half a pound here, you're uh, a pound here, and um, they're super lightweight. Uh, these are ones that I use to, um, when I go into the back country and set up trail cams uh, and, and take trophy rock, which is a mineral lick. Uh, it looks like the regular surrounding rocks. It just happens to blend in a little bit better. It doesn't stand out so much. Um, and there's no scent to it as far as hum other humans. Uh, Another product that we use is Big and J. Um, we use one of their products, a couple of their products that we use uh, as well uh, in the early season to get animals attracted to that area. Um, and then the benefits of going back and forth, having them repeat customers, so to speak, is uh, using the Trophy Rock. And again, Mineral Lick is perfectly uh, capable for them. I'm not gonna get into the uh, argument of uh, the pros and cons of that. There's a lot of people that are against it. Uh, they say that's cheating, whatever, each to their own. Um, but to the tent and the, the sleeping systems, um, I'm going to go ahead and set all these up and just kind of show you the pros and cons of them. Uh, these are super good to get back in four or five miles real quick, especially when you got to carry a trophy rock that weighs four or five pounds and you're taking two of them along with the cameras. The cameras don't weigh a lot, but then you got to have your food and stuff for a couple days that you're there. And I like to take a spotting scope so I can look around and see some of the antler growth uh, and try and spot areas where there's a concentration of uh, a bachelor group of bucks that I can get set up on them and get a camera into their area without bumping them out of their bedding area. Somewhere between their bedding area and their traveling route to water. Uh, that's the ideal place to set that up. Um, so this allows for me to get back in there super quick uh, to get set up and to be comfortable for, for three or four days while I try and get things going with the, the trail cams. These are more of a hunting scenario in wet weather or colder weather, um, and I'm staying for a longer period of time. Um, there definitely is a weight difference between the, the two categories, uh, along with the hammock you can throw in the hammock, it'd be about right here in the middle. A hammock runs about two pounds, um, but my tarping system for the hammock just comes over to the edges. There's not really a lot of overhang. I can put my pack and stuff underneath and keep it dry. And I've got a seal nylon cover for my pack. But the problem with that is that if I get a sideward rain where the rain's coming down at an angle, it, it can't possibly get the stuff wet. 
not a big deal. Um, I have taken the hammock a couple of times. Uh, I do enjoy it, but my preference again would, would be one of these two styles, preferably a tent. Um, I have gone solo by myself uh, for four or five days and had friends and, and family show up a couple days later and I have taken this just by myself. Um, it is five pounds, but it gives me comfort, uh, more confidence sleeping out there. Your mind wants to play tricks on you when you're out by yourself uh, soul hunting. Um, you just you just have to know what your threshold is. Uh, there's a lot of guys that try and go out and say, oh, I'm going to solo hunt. Uh, and they'll go back in three or four miles and uh, they find that their mind plays tricks on them and they freak themselves out. So uh, you got to be right in your head. Uh, Mark Smith has talked about this, uh, covered in some of the videos that I've I haven't posted online, but I've, I've filmed Mark Smith, Muley Slayer, talking about that very thing. you got to be right in your head in order to do this kind of a thing. Um, the last thing you want to do is, is get up at 2 o'clock in the morning totally freaked out. The bear's going to eat you and take off. you just got to use your, your brains. you got to get your food where it needs to be, get it hung up in a, in a bear bag, uh, and just be smart with how you're uh, carrying your stuff. Um, so real quick, uh, I'll go ahead and set these up just to go through them again. You got a half pound, a pound, three pounds, five pounds, um, three day, maybe a four day, squeak out a fourth day. I mean, I, I would go three nights. I wouldn't go more than three nights in these. So when I say three, four, that's what I mean. I mean three nights, four days. Uh, these long term. I We've stayed in this tent um, between Braxton, Taylor and I, and various activities, backpacking, hunting, and stuff. We have spent. Uh, close to a month and a half last year in this tent. Uh, so about 45 days total in, in this tent, the three of us. Uh, great tent. Um, I'm not gonna get into brands and this, that, and the other, and, and all of those. Uh, I, I just go after what's, what, I, what the purpose I'm trying to do and cover, the best tent that I can afford to buy. And um, yeah, sure, I can, I can get this tent a lot lighter than three pounds. I can go buy uh, some Easton's or some of the other tents out there, but uh, I was able to get this tent for free and, and it works really good for uh, a, a single or a two person for uh, multiple days. And so it works really well for me and at three pounds, I can't really complain. Um, yeah, I can drop down to a kilo uh, tent from Eastman, uh, or from Easton, excuse me, and, um, and stay in that for a couple days. But again, it, it's cramped for space. There's not a lot of space in it, so I'd rather go th this route. Um, you can use a tarp with these. Uh, this material is breathable. This one, I do get a little bit of conversation on it, but uh, overall, uh, all these options work really well depending upon what you're trying to do. There are guys that will go out and stay in this for four or five, six, seven days. I just prefer not to. I'd rather uh, go here. Now, you know, if there's a super huge, massive mule deer eight miles back, 10 miles back in, and uh, I knew it was gonna take me 10 days to get it, then I might do a variation of this with a tarp. Um, just because the amount of stuff I'd have to carry in order to, to get the animal out. Um, also, you've got water. Water is a big issue here in Utah. Um, some areas are just littered with, with water. There's water all over, springs all over the place that you can get water uh, pretty accessible. Um, the one place that we do most of our elk hunting and, and a majority of our deer hunting, we've got water uh, that's 300 yards with, within camp. Uh, we have elk that visit it throughout the night, deer that come into it. Um, our camp is far enough back and in the trees uh, that that works really well. Well, if you're 10 miles back in and there's not a lot of water, yeah, you're, I'm gonna have to carry water. I'm gonna have to go and stash beforehand, before the season starts and, and just plan ahead to make sure I have what I have. Um, then yeah, I would, I would go this route. I'd go a lighter weight route, uh, especially if I had to carry a bunch of water in. But anyway, uh, without further ado, we'll go ahead and get these set up and just kind of walk around and talk about them a little bit. Uh, a little bit about some of the pros and cons and uh, also show this set up with a, a tarp option. But anyway, we'll get that done right now. Okay, so here's a, a bivy tarp option. And basically what we're looking at here is you got your bivy and what you do is you take your tarp and preferably you want an eight foot tarp, that way you got a little bit of room on the ends. But uh, you stake down the back, you run it up to a, str a line that you run in between uh, two trees. 
to give you your back wall. Then you've got your roof. And one thing that I always take on my trips are trekking poles. Uh, these trekking poles are not adjustable. Um, I mean, you can use sticks if you wanted to cut some sticks. And then uh, we just take them down out in the front. Um, on this loop right here, you know, you could, you could tie this out and try and make the top a little tighter. The only thing I don't like about this setup is, um, to be honest with you, I almost rather tuck up underneath a pine tree because this setup right here leaves the ends wide open. Uh, one of the things that you can do is you at night you can bring these uh, the front part. You can pull the stake here and you can swing it back and drop it straight down and give you a little bit of protection. But if it starts raining in the middle of the night and you've guessed the wind wrong, uh, you're gonna get water on the inside. But you know, for uh, the tarp and uh, the bivy are about a pound and a half. I don't count the trekking poles because I take trekking poles regardless. So another option is just straight bivy. Uh, this is slumberjack bivy. Um, I, I like it for um, September, August into September. Uh, it gives you about 10 more degrees, as same as the other bivy. It gives you about 10 degrees warmer than what your sleeping bag's rated. Um, one of the things about the bivy that I don't like is this particular one doesn't breathe very well. Uh, the other one does. The first one that you looked at does breathe well. Um, it's got a hoop that uh, right here is a hoop, a plastic hoop that goes in there and you can stake it out. Uh, and what it does, it opens everything out and keeps this off of off your face. So uh, this is the head end. Um, it does have a vent at the top. There's this little piece here so you can vent. The only downside to this, uh, if the mosquitoes, if you're by water uh, and you, and you have mosquitoes in the area it does not have a mesh uh, net in the head area so you're not able to to vent and so it can get extremely warm that's why I say uh, I like to use this in September uh, usually in September we've had a little bit of a, a, a cool spell that'll kind of wipe out some of the mosquitoes but again if you decide to leave that open to get yourself ventilation then um, Mosquitoes can be uh, an issue. It does have taped uh, zipper seams. It's double zippered. Uh, you could vent down here at the bottom instead of your face. Um, it does let a little bit of light in, not much. Uh, it has this uh, DWR or some kind of a membrane uh, on the material, and it just does not allow for it to breathe very well. Um, so for $50, I use this occasionally, um, only when I have to, but uh, I used it one, one year entirely uh, for hunting, and uh, I had some good experiences and some bad experiences with it. One of them being I used a down bag, and the top of the bag did get wet. That was the only thing I didn't like about it. So those are those two options, now we're going to do uh, the 10 options. Okay, so the first tent that we have here is a two-person tent. Um, I'm not going to put the rain fly on it. Uh, you can get the picture. There is a vestibule uh, on this side with this door. It's got good screen for ventilation at the bottom. And it also has a door on this side with the vestibule. The vestibule is about, uh, it's triangle shape being that the, the the peak could be right here at the top of the triangle and then you've got this side so it comes out here and then goes back to the to the other side so it comes out like this goes to the peak there and then goes back to that corner um, there's plenty of room for a pack to fit in that area uh, you could also um, I mean if you absolutely had to you could sleep a small person there I wouldn't do it but uh, the nice thing about this thing is it is lightweight, it's small, it's got ventilation at the, at the bottom so that air can come in here and circulate and come out through the, the top. And so air, all your gear and everything will dry pretty fast and provide it's not too terribly humid. Um, that is a two-person tent. Uh, there is a fly to it. One thing that I like about this tent, 
about both of them, uh, both tents, is that they're freestanding, which means that if the weather was raining, uh, and I got a quick story I'll tell about that with the other tent here in a minute, is that you can actually set the ground cloth up and put the rain fly on with the poles. This is a two pole design. One goes from this corner up over the top down to that corner, and then from this corner up and over and down to that corner. So because it's freestanding, if you're hiking along um, and the weather gets bad on you, it's super easy to pull out the two tents and some stakes uh, and set up the rain fly just as a standalone. Um, you could use that if it's early enough uh, in the season of, for your hunting and there aren't mosquitoes, that's not an issue. You could just run with that and leave the body of the tent. That's gonna cut your weight down significantly. Um, here's the other tent. Uh, Braxton and Taylor and I were up in the Uintas going to King's Peak and we had a, a big lightning storm pop in on us. And um, that's exactly what we did. We set up the rain fly and it turned to hail and the hail started coming uh, through the side. Uh, There's a gap around the bottom about three inches and the hail was bouncing inside. So we set up the ground cloth, um, put our packs around the edge of that side to keep the hail from coming in, pulled our sleeping bags out and went to sleep and woke up a little bit while, a while later, about an hour or so later, and the uh, it got really, really cold. And so we went ahead and set up the tent on the inside with the fly already in place to keep it, it dry. So both tents are capable of doing that. This isn't a, a commercial for the for the tents, for the manufacturer or anything like that. I'm just saying this is what has worked really well for us. It's something that you can do. There's a lot of options with it. Uh, one thing about the bivvies that I didn't talk about is when you set up a bivy camp, um, you have to keep in mind the wind. Um, it, Let's say that you decide it's a little windy and you decide to get up in the middle of the night to go to the bathroom and you got your sleeping bag inside your bivy and everything's sitting there and you get up to go to the bathroom at 2 o'clock in the morning and a little gust of wind comes up and it happens to catch your bivy and your sleeping bag. Uh, I use a down bag so they're pretty light and that wind can take it. it. Now this personally hasn't happened to me. I've just heard of it happening to some other individuals. But their bivy and stuff blows away. <laughs> their sleeping pad and everything gets blown away in the bivy. Um, you don't want to be running around in your shorts at 2 o'clock in the morning freezing cold trying to get your, your camp set back up because the wind blew it away. Um, again, this one, uh, just, just some FYI there. Uh, it's double two doors. You can get an, an idea of the inside there. Um, it is a four-person tent. We've done, we've slept four people in here several occasions. Uh, the vestibules... Um, go from that corner and again they come out to uh, about four feet from the the center three and a half four feet from the center of the the tent here from about right there comes out to right here and goes back so there's ample room uh, to get your rain gear and your muddy stuff in here you can undo the the tent and actually um, cook your meals and stuff in this area right here and you can put packs on one side the fly on zip on the other side so that you can sneak out the one side and it's it's double vestibuled uh, double doored which is really nice it's got a it's got a little gear loft on both sides which is great to hang headlamps and stuff in uh, we take solar uh, a panel with us uh, and charge uh, various components we've got a couple light sticks that we can just hang up there on the top and it lights up the whole inside of the tent so we're not burning people's headlamps and then we leave to go out, we just set those up and uh, recharge them uh, for the next night. Again, this one, like I said, you can set up the rain fly and everything else. Uh, this is a lot more comfortable. If you take two or three guys for 10 days, uh, this is definitely the way I would go. A bivy is just, yeah, it lets you move a lot. It's light, so super lightweight, but just the comfort. Your comfort level on those, at least for me, is not what I want it to be. I want to be a lot more comfortable. Uh, you know, being in the back country, I want room to stretch out and sleep and be comfortable and away from the bugs and stuff. Last thing you want is spiders and crap crawling up on you, um, other insects and stuff, centipedes, millipedes, whatever you've got in your state, snakes. Um, just be careful, use good judgment, and I uh, hope you guys liked the video. Uh, subscribe we're gonna come at you with uh, some sleeping bag stuff and then we're gonna do our uh, early season archery hunting lightweight stuff and then 
obviously as we get further into September, the end of September, the muzzleload hunt, and then in the rifle hunt in October, it gets colder, so you need a bigger pack for more gear. Um, I love my gear. Um, I'm not going to tell people, you know, get this, get that. This one's better than that one. I'm just kind of showing you what works for us. Like and subscribe and uh, share it with your friends. We'll see you on the next one.